Welcome to Electron Line, and in this video we're going to talk about the phases of the moon. Now far away, 93 million miles away, is the sun, and the sun is so big compared to the earth and the moon's orbit that the light pretty well comes in parallel from far away coming from the sun. And here's the earth, and there's the moon going around the earth. The, earth, the moon goes around the earth in a counterclockwise direction looking from the north. So when you look at the north pole, the moon will go around the earth in a counterclockwise direction. Same direction as the earth going around the sun and the earth rotating on its axis and the moon rotating on its axis. Now again, the total time it takes for the moon to go to, go to its, all of its phases is 29 and a half days, which is called the synodic month. It's not relative to stars, it's relative to the earth and the sun. Because as the moon goes around the earth, the earth goes around the sun, and the moon has to travel more than 360 degrees to get back to the same spot between the sun and the earth. Now, we didn't show that here in this drawing, but in the previous video we showed you why that is so. Now, when a new moon is a new moon, when we call it a new moon, then the moon is really not visible to us. If you look, you can only see the moon during the daytime. This is the daytime, day side of the earth. This is the night side of the earth. So the new moon is always on the day side of the earth because it's directly between the sun and the earth. And so it can barely be seen, perhaps, just with a very faint glow on the edges from the sunlight that reflects out the very top and the bottom of the moon as, as uh, relative to the earth. But then as the moon continues on its trip, a few days later, you can see that you begin to see a small portion of the moon. It shows up as a crescent shape, and so we call that a crescent moon. Now notice that as the night begins, let's say at 6 p.m., we can look over towards the, what we would call the western horizon, and we can see the moon slowly disappearing over the horizon. As the moon continues on its trip, you can see that the moon will be higher up at 6 p.m. and we'll see the moon for, the, for about a half a night. And the moon will now have what we call a, a quarter shape, as we call it. So we call this the first quarter. Actually, you can see half of the phase of the moon at that point. As, the moon, as we go on down through the month, you can see that the moon starts becoming bigger. It's now bigger than half of its phase. And so now we call this a gibbous a moon. And finally, Halfway through its phases, now we can see a full moon. A full moon occurs when the moon is on the other side relative to the sun and the earth. So it's on a straight line, just like with the new moon, but this time the moon is on the far side of the earth, away from the sun, and as you can see the entire phase, and this is what the moon will look like at, at full moon. Notice that at, with a full moon at midnight, the moon will be directly above your head. You can already begin to see the full moon at the horizon when the sun sets, and you can see the moon the entire night until the sun rises in the morning, then you'll see this, the moon disappear at the edge of the sky in the, on the western sky. If we then continue on in the, with the uh, trip around the, when the moon, if, we, if the moon then continues with the trip around the earth, let me say it that way, then you can see that the, earth, that the moon begins to get smaller again in, in shape. It now becomes a gibbous, gibbous moon again. Eventually it looks like a half a moon. We call that the third quarter. Then it starts showing up as a crescent shape again. Notice that the crescent is pointed in a different direction at the, the last part of its uh, cycle. And finally, it becomes a full moon again, I mean a new moon again, and now the phase is complete. The moon has gone around once, plus a little bit, to make sure that it's back in the same place between the Earth and the Sun. Now, when the moon is getting bigger, we call that the moon is waxing. Waxing is a term used that comes from the candle making. They used to make candles when they took a, a wick and they dipped it in hot wax and kept dipping it and pulling it out and dipping it and pulling it out. And each time they pulled out the candle, the candle got a little bit bigger and bigger. And so that's the term used for the moon. The moon is waxing. Then when the moon goes from the full moon stage back to the new moon stage, we call that the moon is waning. So we call this a gibbous waning moon or a waning gib gibbous moon or a waning crescent moon, we call this a waxing gibbous moon and a waxing crescent moon. So that kind of shows us what phase in its development it's in. So in the first half of the phases we call it a waxing moon, in the last half we call that a waning moon. And again it all has to do with the relative position of the earth, the moon and the sun. In this case you can see that this side of the moon is lighted up so we, don't, we can only see the dark side of the moon and basically we don't see anything at all. The reason why we can see the moon maybe slightly is because the sunlight that reflects off the earth and then reflects against the moon does light up the moon just enough so we can barely see it, a very faint sight of the moon that way. 
And of course, when the moon is on this side, the whole face of the moon is lighted up. And since we're then looking at it directly above, above our heads in that direction, we can sense, then see the whole brightness of the moon. The full face of the moon is visible. What's of course interesting is that no matter which side the moon is on, the same face of the moon is always pointed towards the Earth. So we never see the back side of the moon. It appears because of the change of the phases that we see different parts of the moon, that's not, not correct. We always see the same side of the moon, sometimes a small sliver of it, sometimes the whole side, but always the same side. Because as the, as the moon goes around the Earth, the moon then also uh, rotates at the same rate that it, that it does when it goes around the, uh, the Earth. And therefore, since the rotation is in sync with the orbit of the moon around the Earth, it always shows the same face to the Earth. But it looks different, and it's kind of nice. Every night, the moon looks a little different. Now, for star viewing, if you want to go look at the stars, it's always better that you do it during a new moon. The moon is so bright that it really makes it difficult to see many of the stars out there at night when there's a full moon out. So full moon is actually a bad time to go look for stars. You really want to go look for stars during a new moon, or perhaps uh, towards the latter part of the phases because you can only see the moon towards the morning and not in the evening. For example, the third quarter and the uh, waning crescent, are the moon is only visible in the early hours of the morning, not late at night. And so therefore, that's also a pretty, a pretty good uh, time to go look for stars. So maybe when the moon is waning past the gibbous state to the third quarter and crescent, a new moon, that's really a good time to go look for stars because then the sky is a lot darker.